Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we will continue our journey with Enhance and in this episode uh, we will take a look on the various configuration and settings that you may need to change it or adjust it to your likings. So stay tuned and together uh, we will configure our Enhance panel. So enjoy. So first, when you log in to your panel, you will be presented by complete account setup. I don't like this. I usually dismiss it and I like to set my things that I want to manually. So how we can do it, uh, you can go to the settings. And first in the settings, uh, you can see that uh, you can change the branding. You can enter the organization name, support URL, e-commerce URL. Also, you can add the system generated emails from address. So in this case, I will set it up to my postmark. So it will be hello at mail.webnestify.cloud. You can click save. And for the control panel, you can switch to de default to dark mode. You can add your logos for the dark mode and also for the non-dark mode. You can change the styling, you can change the fonts, you can add your brand, uh, brand colors and that's pretty it for these uh, branding settings. When we go to the service, if you are using email, if you set up Enhance with email server, here you can configure the sending host rate. And in our settings, we did not set up this email service, but we can still use our postmark or any SMTP where you can go to edit. You can set the host name, which will be SMTP postmarkup.com. Port will be 5A7. And here you can paste uh, your API keys from the postmark server. When we go to application, you can set global uh, global values for uh, PHP. So let me just do some example. So for example, uh, you can add a PHP value, max connection execution time, and text uh, will be, for example, 900 seconds. You can create add or you can also add a time limit i think it is or you can do like uh, max input time that will be also 400 Let me create it so and on so forth so if you want to set this php variables for each server web application server you add, you can set it here in the global. You will have also option to control it by the server or the web application where we will talk about it a little bit later. Also, you can set the screenshot interval uh, to one hour, two hours, six hours, etc. And uh, for the backups, you can also set your global variables uh, for the backups. So, if you want to do every day, twice a day, that's up to you because you have your own backup server so you can schedule it uh, how you want it. Usually how I like to set up my backups are first delay backup is 50 minutes, uh, minimum backup age is four hours, maximum 24, and I do the seven days. And here you can specify the maximum concurrent backups, 8, 15. It really depends uh, how many websites you have. And also you can set allowed backup hours. But uh, with these settings, uh, you will get basically backups every four hours automatically. And those backups are incremental. So that's uh, really, really fast. All right, so 
Now we can take a look on the platform and also you can specify or you can change the control panel domain, PHP admin uh, domain and uh, staging domain, etc, etc. You don't uh, play with the doc Docker credentials, those are generated automatically. And also uh, you can set the server placement, uh, list load, uh, list websites. If you're going to run a shared hosting business, you can automatically decide on which server will websites go. You can set the customer stickiness. And if you are running your own name servers, you can specify your name servers straight away here. Also, you can set the website and subscription hard delete after seven days. So, for example, if customer removed the website, it is still not actually removed from the server, but it is in the soft delete. And it will be delete after seven days. So we can specify how we want it to do it. Also, you can change the language here. As you can see, it supports many, many languages. And also you can set the brute force protection, IP addresses, rate limiting, etc., etc. And also we can set the prohibited domains, so that's uh, really great. Next, what we are going to take a look uh, are packages. Where uh, packages are, if you want to create or add your customer with dedicated or share hosting, you can create uh, the packages. So let me just create first one. I'm going to do testing. And here you can uh, see what package type, shared or dedicated. So it is up to you how you want to do it, but yeah. For the website resources, uh, you can set number of websites for this uh, particular package. So we're going to set uh, five websites number of stagings we're gonna do five you can also limit the disk space which i use unlimited you can limit the monthly page views uh, if you have server with low bandwidth you can specify the bandwidth here and also the number of mysql databases number of ftp accounts etc and for the system resources if you are running a shared hosting server with many customers it's always great to set the system resources. But if you are running the dedicated server, basically you don't need to set any, any resources. So that's up to you. Also, you can set the software installer. For example, you can pre-install WordPress or WooCommerce with WordPress. You can select uh, the plugins. For example, you can pre-install the Lightspeed if you are on Open Lightspeed or Lightspeed Enterprise. You can click install it. Then you can allow the WordPress admin lockdown to specific IPs. Then you also want to allow the WordPress plugin manager for the customer and the package. WordPress user manager also. Emails, uh, we are not using email, so and also you can set the domain limits and also backups. You allow customer to create the manual backups and also he can also restore the backups if he want it. Usually you want to also allow the self installation of SSL, allow SSH access, allow website cloning. And here you can also allow the PHP editor for each website in this package. So customer can set their own limits if you want, if you are running on dedicated server. If you are on shared hosting, don't do it <laughs> because it can really overload the server. And you can also set uh, the PHP versions, which I usually uh, remove those one. And I set 8.3, 8.2, and the default will be 8.3 the latest and also allow redis and basically that's it now we can add our package so we have our testing package we can go back to the settings here you can manage uh, your license 
and here you can manage your API tokens. So that's pretty it uh, for the enhanced settings. And now what we can take a look is how you can create uh, your customers. So let's go to the customer menu and you want to add your first customer. So we're gonna name it testing VN. Gonna name the email. I'm gonna add the name. I'm gonna generate the password. And here you will select the testing package. And now if you're gonna have more servers for customers for backups, you also can assign servers to the customer package. So let's just do it. Enhance web app, enhance database, and enhance backups. And you can click, uh, click add. And now, if you want to see what customer we will be seeing, you can also impersonate the customer. So you can click impersonate. And as you can see, here is the package information number of websites, uh, bandwidth, and no activity yet. So it's pretty easy and straightforward uh, with those packages. And also, if customer going to have uh, more servers, you can also create multiple uh, packages for a single customer. So let's go back to our settings. Gonna add a new one. Testing two. This one will be dedicated. I'm gonna add the package. And when we go to the customer, we can also add the secondary package. And click subscribe. And each dedicated package will need its own server, right? Because you are not running uh, the shared server. So that's something to note. And I think that's it uh, for this. And uh, now we can take a look uh, how you can update your Enhance. So usually when the new update is available, you will get no notification icon here. You can click it. And as you can see, we have new update. So we can click update. It will tell you that you need to read the release notes. You can read it. But usually, when you click update now, it is without uh, any issues. So let's just click the update and now we will wait until the hosting platform is updated. Usually this process can take up to two to three minutes depending on the servers. And you can also open the server tab in a new tab. And you can see that actually our Enhanced Web App server is being updated, so you don't need to worry, but there's keep waiting until it's fully updated. All right, so our Enhanced have been updated. You can uh, refresh the page, and as you can see, everything is up and running again. So uh, one thing I want to also mention in the general enhanced settings where you can also manage uh, the users. So if you have a system administrator or support or business or collaborator, you can invite them uh, to your enhanced panel and you can invite them with email if you set the SMTP or email server or you can invite them uh, by link, which is sometimes really great. So let's just do testing. And here will be support. You click invite. Okay, let's do this one. And here you can share the link with the, with the user and he then can create account in your enhance administration panel. So I think that's it uh, for this uh, episode. In the next episode, uh, we will take a look 
how you can deploy your web application, how you can manage the WordPress, a PHP MyAdmin, SFTP, Redis, various configurations, etc., etc. So I hope you really like uh, this episode. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll be happy to answer. And stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.